bit lower. Okay, we're getting this figured out. Oh no, now that cuts off your mouth. Okay, okay. I think I think that hold it. That's perfect. Okay. 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 <laughs> I think that's perfect because you know can we I move have to the look. right and left. Uh, yes, you can. Not too okay. much though. You know, you're kind of you're kind of like stuck in a box for the next thirty minutes. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So here we are. Um, so just so you guys know, for our, you know, back of the scenes is before we go live, you know, I have to make sure that the person I'm interviewing that they're lined up right because I have their name on the bottom and then I have his logo on top, and his face was a little bit too close, so it was cutting him off totally. So I want to make sure that we could see everything. You know, this is uh, Linda West with Living Live, and I'm really, really excited to share with you guys today. Will Fisher. Now, Will is going to be talking to us about transitioning, like getting clarity and, you know, in making transitions, whether it's from a job to a job, a job to entrepreneur, entrepreneur to a job, you know, whatever kind of transition you're going through in your life. And uh, so, Will, welcome to the show. I'm really glad to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be a part of the show. And, you know, uh, if you, uh, so Will works uh, primarily with the LGBT community. And so if you know anybody in the LGBTQ community, go ahead and share this video out with them, especially anybody you know that might be having some kind of transitional um, issues that they want to work on. And if you stick around to the end, we're going to send you so you can have a free session with him. And I'm going to post the link to all of that and everything and just, you know, towards the end. So go ahead and stick around, make sure you stick around so you can get a free session with Will. Yay. So Will, first of all, you know, why don't you share with us how you got into this kind of work, you know, helping people transition? Yeah, sure. So my background is in uh, nonprofit work. So I uh, recently moved here from New York. I was living in New York City for about 15 years, and I was doing a lot of work with different nonprofits, primarily those who were connecting LGBTQ folks with services. So I worked with an org that did housing for homeless queer youth for a number of years. And that work sort of ended up taking me to a mountain, a place called Easton Mountain, which is a LGBTQ retreat center for personal growth and spiritual development. And so I went there and I was sort of soul searching and they were interested in me helping them develop as a nonprofit. And I was looking for a change. And so I left New York City. I moved to upstate New York where I lived in a cabin in the woods uh, without electricity um, or plumbing. And I made this giant leap into the unknown and started working and living at this personal growth retreat center. And in that retreat center, I was taking a lot of different uh, classes and workshops to develop myself personally. And during my time there, I ended up connecting with a lot of life coaches. And I, my involvement with the center grew and grew and I eventually became the executive director. And we, developed our first, the first LGBTQ coaching uh, uh, experience. So we brought in this guy, he's the former ICF president, his name is D Damien Goldvarg, and he came and offered this curriculum to us. And it so happened that we needed an extra person to make the numbers right. And so I had always considered doing life coaching work eventually, but suddenly there was this great opportunity. So I took this work and it took to me and I realized that I loved it and that I was good at it. And so when I left Easton Mountain, the retreat center, I decided to really commit to doing my life coaching work. And because I have had so many major shifts and transitions like the one that I just mentioned where I went from living in New York City to serving as the executive director in the middle of the woods at this retreat center, I know a thing or two about transitions. And so that is my focus, though I support people in all different aspects of life. That's really awesome. And I, uh, first of all, making that shift to going from like, you know, the hustle and bustle of the city to basically being a, does a bear shit in the woods? Uh, yes, they do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. So you went to like Smokey the Bear, you know, <laughs> T totally different kind of environment and, yeah. and making that adjustment there. Was that a hard adjustment to make? Uh, how long were you there? It was. What was useful for me was I made it sort of gradually. So they had me living there part time. I would go, come for a couple of weeks and then I'd go back to Brooklyn. And that was an exciting time for me because I was really able to embrace 
all of the amazingness of the city life and then all of the amazingness of the country life. And I did that for a couple of years. And then when I became executive director, that's when I moved there full time. And then my most recent transition was moving from there back home to California, where I'm from. So I did that in July. And that was another ginormous transition for me, life changing and, and very exciting. And I'm still sort of settling from that. You know, I've been here a little under a year. Okay, let me ask you this question uh, relating to coaching. Um, do you find that, or do you know, you know, coaching in in the area, you know, helping people, you know, LGBTQ community as opposed to the non LGBTQ community? Because I don't know the politically correct word to use. Maybe you can help me with that. <laughs> but um, if you know, like, do you know if like is there a big difference? And if there is, in what way is there a difference between coaching? you know, people who are not and people who are. Certainly. So there's not a huge difference. I mean, we're all human. We all have similar challenges that we're up against. And the program that I took certainly prepared me and my colleagues to coach non-LGBTQ folks or straight folks, or the non-PC term is breeders. <laughs> but um, that's not PC. Um, I think that's, that's awesome. Just start using it just because <laughs> it's not PC. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> sure. So um, I, I am totally able to, and I do coach uh, straight folks. But in terms of LGBTQ folks, there are a lot of things that we as LGBTQ folks, I, I identify as a queer man. There's a lot of things that we as queer people have experienced that are very unique to the LGBT experience. And so in our training program, we looked at books like The Velvet Rage, and we looked at different scholars who have specifically addressed some of the issues that LGBTQ folks have dealt with and are dealing with and how we can support people in those areas. So it's not, there's not a huge difference, but there are some areas that I'm specifically trained for that can help address issues that LGBTQ folks are up against. Okay. And sorry, there was a blank there. So I had myself muted. So, cause my dogs oh, okay. were barking. No. So, no problem. so when my dogs start barking, I have to mute myself because it gets really loud. So. <laughs> well, okay. So that that's interesting. Um, cause in, you know, for me, I, I do know a lot of people who are LGBTQ and it's interesting because coming from a, the breeder's perspective, <laughs> I, oh, no. I love that term. I don't know why that's not PC. I think that's awesome. Um, okay. But coming, you know, coming from that perspective um, from my per position, um, I like using the word queer. The first time I heard that it was, I would say it was probably about, Five years ago, you know, I played bass guitar in a rock band and we were putting on a fundraising event. And one of the bands that was uh, playing with us, I mean, you know, playing in the event, you know, they were, everybody there was LGBTQ, but they all called themselves queer. And I was like, oh my God, are you allowed to say that? I don't know if you're allowed to say that term. And am I allowed to say that? I don't know. I have no idea what's going on. Ah, help me. Well, you are allowed to say it. Absolutely. And I have had this conversation with a lot of folks who are, are not in the community. And sometimes they hear this explanation and they say, oh, well, I guess I am a little bit queer because the queer term is really an umbrella term for anything outside of hetero conformity, right? Anything outside of someone who was born cis male who is attracted to cis females, meaning they were born biologically male and that's completely how they identify, how they like to express themselves. And they are attracted solely to women who were born female. It also implies that, that so some people who might have a leather fetish, for example, or might be into like BDSM stuff, they might identify like, man who has sex with women in a fairly traditional way can put themselves under the queer umbrella. Okay. I'm not sure if, uh, you look like you've frozen, so I'm not sure. Are the I dogs can, barking I again you. or are you frozen? <laughs> oh, I'm frozen. Okay. Hmm. No, the dogs are not barking. Oh. So, okay, let's do this. I've had this happen before and I know that Will cannot Hello. hear me, but 
If you can hear, hear me or if you can hear Will, can you please in the comments below just post that you can hear me or not? Because if not, I'll end the broadcast because that would be silly to keep going. But I see we have Sherry in the house. Welcome, Sherry. Good to see you here. And then we have Sonia in the house and Will dropped out. He's trying to come back in. I can see him trying to come back in. Oh, here he comes. Hello. Let's bring him on. Let's see what happens. Good morning for you over there, Sonia. Okay, can you hear me, Will? I can hear you, yeah. I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, sometimes what happens is, you know, just because it's internet and we're streaming and stuff, sometimes something happens and it freezes up. And so okay. you did exactly the right thing. Okay. And I'm just hoping they can hear us. I have no idea. So we'll find okay. out. It's no the problem. beauty of, of live video. You know, we just That's never right. know what's going to happen. You never know. Yeah. So, well, thanks for that um, that explanation, you know, yeah. you know, explaining the difference there because, you know, I just don't know. I don't know. And, and the only way to learn is to ask the questions. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so many so, folks are kind of afraid to ask questions because they don't want to offend, you know, but I really right. encourage people to, to take, to have the courage to, to ask. And if you, if you say that, like, I, you know, I don't want to offend you, but I'm curious about this. Chances are the person is going to be able to accept that and, and you won't be offended. They won't be offended. Or if they are, they can explain why. <laughs> and you've had a learning moment there. True, true. And either way, you found a learning moment. And I know yeah. you, well, you and I spoke, er, you know, previously, and we talked about this. So I know, like, I already feel comfortable, um, you know, asking you the questions that we already talked about anyway. But also to note there is that I feel comfortable asking questions anyway. So for me, it's kind of, kind of easy. I'm a nosy, you know, eager beaver. I just want to learn as much as I possibly can. <laughs> yeah, I am a very curious person too. And as a coach, that quality comes in handy, I've found. Oh, that's true. Good point. You know, now I want to get on to, uh, you know, the, the, the session here. We're talking about how to gain clarity, skills and confidence to achieve your goals manifest your dreams and boldly step into your fantastic future. So do you want to share with us, like what's the process for somebody first to you know, gain clarity on, on what they're doing? Sure. Well, it really depends on the individual as, as with all coaching, it's a very individualized process and it's unique to that person and how they learn and how they think and how they operate. But so much of that is about getting past all the disempowering beliefs that I'm not good enough, that this is unsafe, that I can't, I can't follow what I care about, right? So you have to be able to get past those disempowering beliefs in order to see what is possible and to connect with what you really, really desire. So I have a series of strategies and processes and techniques that I tailor to the individual that help them get clear about what they value in this world, who they want to be in this world, what they're passionate about, what their skills are, and then what they can do that is going to help them pay the bills, right? And how do we put all that in a pot, stir it up and come up with the perfect career path that is going to satisfy all those needs? Okay. Uh, okay. And then thank you for that. And then why is yeah. it important you know, why do you feel that it's important for people to get clear on that? Um, you know, can't we just like just go through life or why is it important for us to get clear on that message? We totally can. And so many people do. I mean, there's so many people living a half-assed life. You know, they're living a, a life, doing a job that they don't really care about just to pay the bills. And they're dating someone that they're not that interested in, or they're, you know, doing hobbies that they're not that excited. You know, there's so many people are doing this shit that is not driving them, that is not full of purpose, that is not giving them joy and and filling them with passion um so we can but there's so much more available and if we can find the courage within ourselves to go after these bigger bolder visions these this future that is possible for everybody everybody has the capacity to step into something brilliant and magnificent and true to who they are but we have to get through all the fear and all the bullshit that we've been taught that we've been programmed to believe in terms of taking the safe path and do, taking the steps in life that are going to keep you safe and keep you keep those bills paid there's so much more out there if you can get past that and, and how do you help somebody get past that because that's a that's a biggie because if we grow you know grew up in a in a situation where there they go if you you know grew up in a situation where 
um, people were telling you, you know, you're this, you're that, you're below people, you're beneath, you're dumb, you're stupid, you're ignorant. If you grew up in a situation like that, how do you help somebody get beyond that to be able to even realize or imagine that their life doesn't have to be that way, that their life can be a lot bigger and better and that they are bigger and better? How do you, you know, help people through that? Sure. Well, again, there's a, a, a lot of different techniques, but a lot of it that I like to draw on is visualizing, right? Really just trying to think outside of your current reality and think if you could really have it all, what would that look like? And in, in creating invitations like that. Um, but sometimes in terms of quieting that voice, it's looking for strategies that are going to recognize that that voice is going to happen right it's it's it might be impossible to ever get rid of it completely but then to have strategies that can help you move past it right so maybe it's looking at telling that voice to shut up you know and and really naming that like actually putting a name to that voice like who is that negative talker in my head what is their name and how do i get them to shut up because i know if i really dig deep that what they're saying is not true, that there is something so much bigger for me out there. And so if I can find ways that I can quiet them and then replace those disempowering negative thoughts and beliefs with empowering affirmative thoughts and beliefs, then I can take the next step forward and see where that takes me. And when I do that, and when I start to have little successes, then the the voices that are affirming and that are positive are gonna start to get louder and that path is gonna be easier. But those other negative voices might still come back. So it's about having those strategies to to cope with that. Now, that's a good point. So do you recommend, like, so for example, if uh, a negative thing comes up and and uh, you know who was the person that said that to you, do you recommend that giving that voice that person's name or do you more recommend giving it uh, like a fictional character's name or a fictional name? It's really what works for you what works for you but i i find that naming it can really give you control over it so it, it could work for you to give it that person's name if it's really that specific um but generally these things are more of a a, a morphing of a lot of negative uh messages that we've gotten throughout our lives so uh, in a coaching session earlier today uh we use this technique actually I, I don't use it every day but we use it today and he named those negative voices the beast and his, his uh, statement to the beast is tie it up. He said, shut up beast, I'm gonna tie you up. And once it's tied up, he can start taking the steps that he knows he can take. Ooh, I think that's a, I think that's a great technique to use. I love it. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Now, you wanna share with us um, your fantastic future visioning session. What is this all about? And then I'll share with everybody how they can you know, get a session with you for free. You get a free session, you guys. So why don't you tell us what that's all about and what they can learn in that 30 to 45 minutes. Certainly, so it's really the beginning of a process, but it's an opportunity for you to visualize what your world might look like if you can get past the fears that are keeping you from stepping into something really big and bold and unique to who you are and more connected to your values and putting you in a path towards living a really passionate, exciting, joyful life. So the process is a visualization process, but it's also answering some questions that, that can go deep. And then I leave you with some very specific recommendations. So it's a little different from a, a more traditional coaching session, which is all inquiry based, meaning I'm just, I'm asking a lot of questions and then we're creating action steps together. Um, in that, in this process, I'm giving you specific recommendations at the end of it based on our conversation. Okay, cool. And, and you can find that. Let me see. Hold on here. By typing the word future in the comments Ooh. below, just type the word future. And then my messenger bot will send you a link to complete a Google form that Will has created. And then that with that form, you can then um, set up your session with Will. And I think it's going to be a really great time for you to, you know, just to dive in. And, and if you've never had a coach, you know, it's really important to hook up with somebody who you resonate with, somebody that like will get you right. And, and so, you know, if you've connected with Will in any way, shape or form, I highly recommend just, you know, taking this session so you can see if there's something out there for you. Trust me, 
when I first hired my life coach, I had no idea what was in store for me and how much my life would change. And it was the best decision I ever, ever, ever made in my life. And I highly recommend coaching for everybody because it can you know, help you tap into something that you don't know that's there because you're too close to the forest to see the trees and your coach is standing on the outside and they're the ones that are going to help you get to the other side. And it's such a beautiful relationship. Trust me on that. You want to have anything on that? Yeah, I would just echo that. I am, am the same. I didn't know the power of coaching until I got a coach and saw the epic milestones that it helped me create in my life. And so I'm passionate about supporting people in the same way. And I just want to put it out there that although I specialize in supporting LGBTQ folks, I certainly am open to working with with straight folks as well. Right. Good point. Um, as breeders. <laughs> Everyone's a little bit queer, though. That's true. Oh, my gosh. I, I definitely... I definitely fit that category. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about just briefly then um, fears because, uh, you know, f you mentioned fear in ju you know, just a minute ago. So I wanted to just briefly talk about fears and like any kind of fears you've gone through in your life and how do you go through them? Because a lot of times what happens is we when we start to approach a fearful situation, we start to feel fear. You know, it's that flight or fight thing. And a lot of people will then, you know, retract and run away. So I want to ask you, you know, any fears that you've had in your life, you know, what was the process you've gone through? Or I, I know you can't blanket it, you know, for all fears, because all fears are different. But you know, what what kind of process do you have that makes you just kind of like go through it and, and just step through that fear? Yeah. So you mentioned fight and flight, and then I'll, I'd put the other one out there is freeze. And freeze was sort of my go-to, right? Freeze was kind of my go-to. If, if I was having a fight with my boyfriend and I, you know, had this fear that he was going to abandon me or something, I'd like kind of just quiet up and then he wouldn't be able to talk to me, you know? So that was kind of my freeze mechanism. Um, my strategy for fear has been to bring a deeper awareness to my response to fear, to recognize that it's happening and to bring awareness to my nervous system, right? And when I am able to be aware of, oh, this is happening right now, my heart is racing because I'm afraid, then I'm able to, rather than taking the fight, flight or freeze, I'm able to take a breath, take a big deep breath and step into something else, right? And oftentimes that looks like vulnerability and knowing that I have been able to step into my vulnerability before and come out the other end safe, right? So this isn't a tiger that's attacking me and I'm gonna die. This is me dealing with something that I'm a little afraid of, but I can breathe through it and step into my vulnerability, speak truthfully, speak from my heart. And most likely, as in the case, you know, th that's happened to me in the past, I will come out the other end, more deeply connected to this person or this experience that I'm having that's making me fearful. So how do you help people uh, break through their fears? Because I, I imagine, um, and this is just my own imagination. But uh, when you grow up, and when you first discover that you are queer, like what is that process for a lot of folks, I guess? I mean, you can't answer for anybody else, but you do know a lot of people in the area. So what is that like? I, I, you just um, telling your family, you know, and that's can be, that can be a fearful situation for people. And so how do you come out and tell that or, or even telling um, a potential employer or an employer, or do you not do that? You know, what, what is that like? Oh, wow. Uh, that's a good question. Um, is that a big can of worms? No, no, no. I no. I appreciate the question. And I think that you're right, that it really changes for, for everybody, but it really comes back to what I spoke about before, which is vulnerability and speaking your truth. Right. And as a queer person, I, that's something that I had to do as a 16 year old, you know, speaking this truth that, that I was told was a shameful truth. Right. So this was actually a, a very major step in my personal growth process at a very young age and continues to be for many people um, who are queer, who ha have to, or they finally choose to come out of the closet. Um, <clears throat> I think 
being unattached with the outcome. So recognizing that this person might reject you or this might per person might not, but knowing that speaking your truth is going to empower you and potentially bring you closer in connection with this person, but not being attached to that. Um, that's one possible strategy. And in general with, with facing your fear, you know, if you're afraid of going up and introducing yourself to that person you're attracted to at the bar to, to rather than focus on the outcome, to recognize that this is just a thing that's happening right now and to really focus on the process and not worry so much about the outcome, uh, can be another strategy. Uh, because oftentimes we create bigger dramas in our heads than the reality. So to, to really try to get a clearer perspective and not make things so big uh, can be useful as well. That's so true. You know, in 2015, I did a year of fears and I, every single morning I woke up, I said, what scares me? The very first thing that popped into my head was the thing I did that day. And I did it regardless, just because I made a commitment to myself, 365 fears. And you're so right, because I would say probably, probably every fear, I my imagination just ran away with how big and scary and awesome, awful it was going to be. And then when I actually faced the fear, it was nothing like that at all. It was just uh, amazing. Totally. I'm so glad I did it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing, I, what I love about that, that project, that commitment you made is that it is practice. Right. And so in the same way that like you're building a muscle memory almost for your nervous system. So in the same way that when we practice baseball or something, we get better at it. We get better at it because we're training our system how to, to relate to it. You're training your nervous system to step through fear, step through fear, step through fear. And so it's not that fear goes away, but you just become more skilled at, at stepping into it. That is so true because and that's, I haven't said it that way, but I do like that, um, the way you put that, because I realized what happened is I be, I've become very quick, very quick to recognize that it's fear. And then very quick to say, what's causing the fear? And then realizing that, oh, it's just fear. And then I just do it anyway. And it's become, it's become literally, you know, like seconds that I can do this now. Whereas before oh. I could like, ponder over something for days and then never do it because yeah. I would fly. I didn't freeze. I just fly. <laughs> I, <Yeah. just> ran. <laughs> I love that. The other reframe that's worked for me is that uh, part of my morning statement is that, so I, I have a statement that I say aloud every morning. It's um, chief definite aim statement. I don't know if you're familiar with that practice, but it's basically calling into the future, calling the future that you want in. So you're expressing what you want in in you know a couple of years from now, where you're speaking about it as if it's already happened. And then you talk about what you give in return and how you're going to be in order to gain that, in order to create this for yourself. And so one of the things that I commit to, to doing in order to create the future that I want is to step through fear again and again. And because I have that commitment and I'm reminded of that commitment every day, when something fearful comes up, when I'm like, oh, wow, I should maybe go to that networking thing or i should go you know try to talk to this cute guy or something and the fear comes up i'm like oh then i have to do it the reframe is that like oh it's i'm afraid of it oh that that means i have to do it that's what i'm supposed to go do you know mm -hmm. so it's like it it calls me instead of like pushing me back because i've committed to it and yeah uh, yeah it sounds like you did that with your 365 <laughs> Yeah. And you know, I, I actually say that too. Now I say, oh, it's, it's scary or it's, um, it's a fear. So I have to do it because it's a fear. Yeah. It's an opportunity it, for growth and probably. Oh God, totally an opportunity. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. You know, one day I was attending an event and I saw Jack Canfield, you know, he's author of chicken soup for the soul series. And, you know, I just, I saw him there. He made a comment that he was going to go to lunch. And I was like, oh, let me take you to lunch. And I just grabbed him by the arm and took him to lunch. Awesome. Now, if I had let, if I had let my fear get in the way, I wouldn't have done that. And so yeah. I just did it. And it's really by, you know, uh, taming the fear or whatever, you know, whatever words to t use by taming that, that I've been able to now get, get control of it. And uh, I don't know what they're barking at today, but, but, you know, I was, you know, I'm able to more like get control of it and to just step into it and realizing that, you know, probably 99% of the time, everything is great. 
not scary at all. Totally, I love that. Yeah, and so many of these opportunities in life happen really fast, right? Like that moment with the lunch opportunity. So doing all the practice leading up to that is what made it possible for you to just jump into it. Yeah. That's so true. I highly recommend a year of fears for everybody because oh. it, yeah, is it scary? Yeah, that's why it's called a year of fears. It's not a a year of pleasant times, you know. It's like <laughs> it's a year of fears. But my uh, growth potential, I mean, my growth, uh, my growth was so fast, and mm. I I just gained so much confidence in that one cool. year, and it was probably equal to I don't know ten fifteen years if I had done it any other way. I imagine, Brilliant. but it was. I highly recommend it to everybody. So, so Will, what kind of what parting words do you want for our guest as we sign out here today? Well, going back to the the, the conversation we had about living a half ass life, that I want <laughs> none of your guests to live a half ass life. I want them all to live no. a full life, a life of purpose, a life that they love, a life of their dreams. And so, if there's any way that I can support you in doing that, please do write future or reach out in some other way. Um, cause I love doing this work and I'm, would be honored and thrilled to support any of you. Thanks. Awesome. And if you, um, are watching the replay or you know, live, uh, go ahead. If you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments below and either will, or I will get back to you. And then again, post the word, the word future in the comments and my messenger bot will send you a link where you can connect with Will outside of here. So Will, thank you so much for being here. Oops, oh my gosh, I'm covering up your face. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, we don't want that. Wait, let me hide that. There we go. There we go. Will, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate having you here on Living Live. Thank and if you. there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. And you awesome. have an awesome, awesome day. And I'm sure I will see you around again. For sure. All right. Thank you so much, Linda. Have a great thank one. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye right, now.